Have you heard of the Arduino Grove system from Seed Studio? It's this Arduino shield with a bunch of four point connectors all over it. And these connectors accept a ton of different modules like LCD screens, temp sensors, buttons, buzzers, potentiometers, that type of thing. In this video, we're gonna look at 10 of the Grove modules that come in the Arduino Grove Starter Kit from Seed Studio. We'll look at three Arduino code examples using the Grove system, and then finally, we'll go over my favorite feature of the Grove system. It's probably not what you think. Stay tuned. Are you trying to figure out this whole Arduino thing? If you want to get a jump start into Arduino programming, you should check out Programming Electronics Academy. We have a membership program that kind of walks you through step by step how to program Arduino and use it and build cool stuff. If that sounds interesting to you, check out the link in the description. Well, I got this Arduino Grove starter kit in the mail the other day. And you know, for the longest time, I thought it was the Groove system, but I've been schooled and it is the Grove system. Still working on this whole English language thing. Anyway, what is this Grove system exactly? Well, the Grove system is essentially two things. There's an Arduino shield, and then there's a bunch of different electrical modules. The shield connects to your Arduino board and maps out a bunch of the Arduino pins to these four point connectors. And the electrical modules also have four point connectors. To connect a module to the shield, you simply use a little ribbon cable. So the whole idea of the Grove system is that you can create circuits by simply plugging in different modules into the Grove Shield. So let's take a look at the Grove Starter Kit and see what comes in it. First, there's an I2C LCD that has an RGB backlight. Notice the connector on the LCD module. You're gonna see a connector exactly like this on all of the modules. It's that standard Grove four-point connector. Now, below the LCD module in the kit, there's the Grove Shield itself. The shield is layered with these four point connectors. It's got them all over the place. They have seven connections for digital pins two through eight. It has a connection for the UART. It's got four I squared C connection points and four connectors for analog pins A0 through A3. It also has a two way switch to select either 3.3 volts or five volts as the power from the Arduino board. It's got a handy side facing reset button so you can reset your Arduino board. It also has an LED indicator so you know when the board has power. Along the edges of the board, you've got your standard Arduino headers. So if you wanna to try to stack a board, you could, although most shields would block the connectors, but you could probably squeeze some through. Now in the starter kit below the plastic holder that holds all the sensors, we've got 10 ribbon cables. These are what connect the shield and the modules together. There's a micro hobby servo that also has that standard four pin Grove connection. It even comes with a little instruction manual for getting started, which I have to say I kind of liked. It doesn't go in depth into all the modules, but it gives like a quick little tip on them and some demo projects to use each one. It's definitely worth looking over. Beyond that, there's three standalone LEDs and a nine volt battery connector for connecting your Arduino to external power. Okay, now back to the sensors. It has a capacitive touch sensor that can be used on one of the digital pin connections. There's a momentary push button meant also for one of the digital pin connectors. When you press the button, it creates a high output at the pin. There's a piezo buzzer module that can be connected to a digital pin. There's a potentiometer module. You could use this on one of the analog connectors. There's a light sensing module. This also is meant for the analog connector. There's an LED module, and this is where you can connect one of those standalone LEDs to, and it's got a little trimmer potentiometer to adjust the resistance to the LED. And it's the long leg of the LED that goes into the hole marked with the plus sign. Then there's a relay module that's meant to be used with one of the digital connector points on the Grove Shield. There's a temperature sensor, and that's meant for connecting to one of the analog connectors. And then there's a sound sensor that uses an Electret microphone, and that's meant to be used with one of the digital pins. So that's a handful of really common sensors and output devices that you might wanna be using with your Arduino in the first place. And this is literally plug and play for these modules. So let's check out some code. So there's a GitHub repo where you can grab all of the code examples that go for the different modules in the Groove starter kit. I downloaded the zip file of all the examples and then I saved the sketches 
in the Arduino folder in my documents. There's also a library in there for the LCD, and I took that library folder and put it into the libraries folder in my Arduino sketchbook folder. So once you've put those code examples in the appropriate folder, and you open up your Arduino IDE, then you can go to File, Sketchbook, and you can go, I put all that those code examples in an, in an enclosing folder called I called Grove, and then all those examples are right here. And so let's just go ahead and start with that first one. I'll open up the Grove button, and it's got the code right here, and it's saying, all right, they've got a pin button attached to pin three, and then a pin LED attached to pin seven. So I guess I'll just go ahead and connect these the button module to the Grove, and I'll connect the LED module, and I'll use three and seven, so digital pin three and digital pin seven. Okay, I'll go ahead and upload this code. Now it looks like if I press the button, the LED is gonna come on. If I'm not, if I don't press the button, the LED goes off, so let's check that. All right, working like a champ. Okay, that was pretty cool and really easy to, to do. Okay, let's look at another example. Here's that sketchbook again, down to the Grove where I put the files. And let's check out the rotary angle sensor, AKA, that's a potentiometer. Okay, so they've got the potentiometer connected at A0. So I'm gonna take that potentiometer module and I'll just connect it to the A0 port on the Grove Shield. Let me do that. Now that was pretty easy, but you still have to be smart enough to know which direction the connector goes. So for me, that can be a stretch sometimes. So this program is reading the value at pin A0, so where the potentiometer is attached, and then it's printing that value to the serial monitor window. So I'll upload this code, then I'll open up the serial monitor window. Now I'm gonna adjust that potentiometer and see. Okay, yeah, it's adjust. So the value I should get is between a zero and 1,023, and the potentiometer is dividing, it's acting as a voltage divider between five volts and zero volts. So that's, uh, that's how that's working. So that's pretty cool. Again, pretty darn easy. And notice I just left those other connections there. I didn't think they'd hurt, and it doesn't look like they are. All right, let's check another uh, program out. Let's try, let's go here to File, Sketchbook, Grove. Let's take a look at that RGB backlight LCD. And we'll do the Hello World example. So I'll go ahead and upload this code. And it looks like this is just printing hello world to the LCD. And then it prints the number of seconds since the last reset below that. And this is where you can set the background color. So they've got color R, color G, and color B. And they've just defined those up here as 255.0. So this will be a red backlight, but we could change it to a green backlight or a blue backlight or any uh, combination there in between. But let's just go with this default. I'll go ahead and set up the circuit and we'll uh, check this out. Well, that's pretty cool. It's working like a charm. It's got the hello world at the top, and then it is showing the number of milliseconds that have passed since the last reset. That's pretty sweet. What's also neat with the I squared C ports is it doesn't matter which port I use. I can plug it into any one, and I don't have to designate in the code. The board is just going to automatically pick up the port that I have it attached to. Pretty cool. Well, what if I wanted to add a servo to this? What if I just wanted to play around with the LCD and add a servo? Let's, let's do this. I'm going to go to File. In the examples, there is some canned servo code. So I'm just going to go to Knob. So in this example, you've got a servo attached to pin 9. But since I don't have a 9 on the Grove system, I'm going to use pin 6. And I know I can still do PWM at pin 6, and that's what servos use. So I'll change that to 6. So in this program, you read a value from the potentiometer, where you've got the potentiometer attached. You map that output from zero to 180, and then you pass that value to the servo to write the directions. And if all this stuff is like, hey, this is a lot of crazy stuff, I really, I'm not following you, I'm not trying to necessarily instruct on the code in here. If you've got questions about the code, you might wanna check out the training academy we offer. We walk through all this stuff step by step, or just check out our YouTube channel. We got a bunch of other videos on here about this type of thing. Anyway, okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take this code, and I'm gonna throw it right into that other LCD program and see if we can, uh, just make a quick mesh up here. So what I did is I took a bunch of that servo code and I put it into the LCD program. So now when I move the potentiometer, it's going to move that servo. And in addition to that, the direction I've moved that servo, what position it's at between zero and 180, that is gonna show up on the LCD. Now I didn't do a great job printing to the LCD. And if you can catch it, let me know in the comments if you see where I screwed up. But anyway, that's pretty slick. I've got this stuff up and working in no time, just with the matter of connecting a couple things. Kind of like it. So my favorite feature of the Grove system 
Well, it might be kind of lame, but I just like that it's easy to make the connections and that the connections don't click in. So it's just like a snug fit. You can push it in and then pull it out. There's no like clicking that you, you know, that like holds it in there and then you have to kind of unclick it. I've got big fat fingers. It's hard enough to get the connectors in in the first place. I don't want to have to try to mess to pull them out. So just that the ability to put it in real quick, pull it out. That's a great feature. Well, I hope you like this video where we walk through the Grove system for Arduino. I think it's pretty cool. I can definitely see how it can allow you to put some circuits together really quick and start playing around. So that's kind of neat. It comes with some pretty basic code examples that you can play with, which are also kind of fun. You can mesh them together pretty easily. So.